Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today on exploring veter veteran benefits. Today is November 16th, 2023. My name is Lauren Wagner, and I'm the program coordinator of the Veterans Resource Center at Skyline College. Our goal is to help connect students, faculty, staff with resources and services for veterans and military connected individuals. And I'm very excited about the wide range of content that we'll be hearing about today. Um, before we begin, I would like to review a few housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded, and by logging in, you are agreeing to be part of this recording. The recording will be placed on the CalVet website and CalVet YouTube channel soon after the close of this program. This will allow you to access these resources at a later time and share with anyone who could not join us today. Um, if you're not familiar with the Zoom platform, I want to point out a few features that we'll be using throughout the webinar this afternoon. At the bottom of your toolbar, there is a chat icon and a Q&A icon. Please feel free to open both of those items up now. Um, as each presentation is occurring, the CalTAP team will be placing important links into the chat. We are going to disable the chat to all attendees. However, we do want your questions. Please post those in the Q&A. And the subject matter expert is going to answer your question um, as soon as they can. We do ask you to be specific with your questions, but please do not include any personal information in the Q&A. Throughout the presentations, we will be providing um, the contact information for each speaker. So if you do need to have a more in-depth conversation, you'll be able to reach out to them. For our agenda today, we have the opportunity to hear about some incredible local and statewide resources, and we hope there's something beneficial for everyone to discover. Today, our presenters include Bridget Leach, who's from the SFVA Student Veteran Health Program, and we'll be discussing how to and tips for navigating VA healthcare. Uh, we also have Michael Sitneros from the CalTAP team, who's going to provide a broad overview of the CalVet benefits. We have Kevin Graves here, and he's going to discuss the role of local interagency network coordinators, also known as LINK. And also, finally, we have Alex Ayag here from the veteran, um, I'm sorry, the San Mateo County Veterans Service Office, and he'll provide a broad overview of all that information. Um, here at Skyline College, we appreciate all of our presenters and our partnerships. And I'd like to kick it over to Bridget. Wonderful, thank you so much, Lauren. Um, such an honor to be here. So thank you so much for having um, having us here from the San Francisco VA Student Veteran Health Program. Um, so I'm going to be doing kind of the, fir the first kind of segment of this presentation on veteran benefits, particularly looking at navigating VA health care. So we're going to start kind of with a um, bird's eye view of the federal government and federal resources as we start to kind of move into state and local resources as well. So um, next slide, whenever you have a chance. Great. So, um, and I've been the coordinator of our student veteran health program since um, kind of our flagship site um, started in 2010. And so I've been doing a lot of kind of helping folks navigate the VA healthcare system for um, 13 years now, actually. And so I really love this quote because I think it really captures um, that there's a lot of great resources out there, but there is this question, but you know, how exactly do I get there, right? What road do I take? What number do I call? What door do I walk through? And so we really do try to break down kind of the process and make it as accessible as possible. And hopefully we'll start to answer some of those questions for you today, but please feel free to reach out to me afterwards if there's any specific questions that you have that you don't feel like that you've been able to have answered. Um, because it really can be very specific um, for every individual veteran. Um, so next slide. Wonderful. So looking at the kind of overall federal government branches of the Department of Veterans Affairs, oftentimes these sometimes will get mixed up and kind of assumed that they're kind of all together, lumped together as one VA. But there are currently three administrations, the VA. So there's the Veterans Health Administration branch, and that particular one um, is the one that I work for. So when I think about the VHA or the Veterans Health Administration, I tend to think of it as anything involving treatment and care. So medical care, mental health services, any sort of, you know, 
care that you might receive at a uh, medical facility or an outpatient clinic or a vet center, um, or even now a lot of services are virtual, but they're done kind of through employees of the Veterans Health Administration, that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about the Veterans Health Administration. Um, now, when we're talking about the VBA, the Veterans Benefits Administration, the way I tend to think about that one is that that is anything involving a payment. So when you're thinking about your service connection disability payments, GI Bill, um, VRNE benefits, um, home loans, anything like that, that's what I tend to think of as the VBA branch of the VA. Um, now, granted, while well, these three branches the third one being the National C Cemetery Administration, and hopefully it'll be many years before you need to worry about that, but it's good to know that those benefits are there. Um, they you keep their si systems and kind of information fairly separate, so it's important to make sure if you're updating an address or anything like that, that you're doing it all in the three systems. Um, the other thing, though, to keep in mind, if you are having trouble getting a hold of someone from the VBA, um, we do, for example, a lot of times we'll get that with VRNE counselors. We're always happy to reach out to some of the VRNE counselors to kind of ask them if they can reach out to student veterans in particular. Um, we get that request a lot, and we're always happy to do that because we do have the same, at least, internal Teams messaging system, so we are able to do that, um, even though the branches are quite separate in other ways. Um, and since we do also have the County Veterans Service Office here today, um, Alex, thanks so much for being here. I also like to make sure to point out that while the County Veterans Service Office is a part of the federal government, we interact with them a lot. So a lot of times we will work with these, you know, the County Veterans Service Offices to help veterans file for service connection disability because maybe they're not yet eligible for VA health care, but then that will make them eligible. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but always recommend connecting with your CVS so for a benefits review and or assistance in filing for service connection and finding out about many of your other local benefits that you're eligible for. Um, next slide. Wonderful. So um, again, with the bird's eye view, we're, when we're talking about VA healthcare, there are facilities across the country. So this is a nationwide healthcare system. And we also have facilities in the Philippines, Guam, American Samoa, so really kind of spread out in quite a lot of directions, as well as Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands. Um, so it's important to know once you enroll in the VA healthcare system, you are enrolled in the VA. However, you usually enroll in a very specific local VA. So for example, I work for the San Francisco VA healthcare system, but a lot of student veterans in the Bay Area may be living in the East Bay, and perhaps they actually also want to be registered in the Northern California VA healthcare system. So it's important to know, and you can go to the next slide actually for this, thank you, um, that within this Bay Area, um, and for folks sometimes that are actually traveling out of state sometimes to go to school or just kind of visiting family, um, it's always good to enroll in the healthcare system where you're attending classes. Um, so we're always happy, even if you have your healthcare in another VA healthcare system, we can also upload you into San Francisco. That way you can go to the VA emergency room in San Francisco 24-7. So if you're at Skyline, that might be a little bit closer than perhaps the Palo Alto um, emergency room, depending on where you're living, where you're going. And so in the Bay Area, we're really lucky that we have the San Francisco VA healthcare system, the Northern California VA healthcare system, and the Palo Alto VA healthcare system. And um, the emergency rooms for those three facilities are in Sacramento, Palo Alto, and the San Francisco area. So we'll probably kind of leave it at that and move on to the next slide. Wonderful. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about eligibility for VA healthcare. Um, I added a meme on this one that kind of talks about how, see, it's simple. <laughs> um, I've gotten to be working around you know, with folks in the VA healthcare system and getting into the VA healthcare system, like I was saying before, for about 13 years now. And while there are some situations where it's fairly simple, um, so a lot of student veterans we're working with have um, served in active duty for more than two years or two years or more, have an honorable discharge. And a lot of times, if, if you're coming out of the military, your base rate, as well as your um, GI Bill doesn't count towards your income. So when you're applying, it's based on the previous year's 
lose income, a lot of times folks are falling below the thresholds um, for, for VA healthcare and can enroll. So in that case, it's fairly simple <laughs> as far as from an eligibility standpoint, and most folks are eligible. However, there's a lot of different factors, and this is true of any benefit through the VA, um, that they really are looking into pieces of your service history. So length of service, era of service. If you served after 1980, for example, you have to have served two years of active duty service in order to be eligible or more. However, there's exceptions. So I, I always really encourage folks to reach out if you have a specific situation. It's a little bit more complicated for reservists, but sometimes they also can be eligible. So it's really helpful to, I think, speak individually with someone to kind of break it down and be able to say, here's my situation. Do you think I'm eligible? And I also think it's really important for every veteran to know if they're eligible for VA health care, if they're not eligible for VA health care, why not? Um, and have that double checked because I have had some situations where they might have been told by someone doing the enrollment that they weren't eligible and they actually were. So I always think it's important to double check that, get that in writing, ask to kind of double check that with a supervisor if possible, or us to kind of try to help make sure that you're really clear on why you're not eligible. And then third, what you would need to do to become eligible for VA health care. Um, so a lot of times what might happen is for folks that are maybe coming from more remote areas to travel into Skyline or other schools, the income threshold might be a little bit lower in that area. And so perhaps if they have a spouse that's also working, their income from the previous year might actually be um, a little bit too high. But if they then become service connected, then they would be eligible. So as I kind of noted at the bottom of this particular slide, it's really important to know, you know, your county veteran service office can help you um, file any service related claims that could then make you eligible if you're 10% service connected or higher. Um, and then also, if you have a, a an issue around your discharge type or character of service, um, it's important to know that there are organizations locally, we've got Swords to Plowshare that will help folks to um, be able to do a discharge upgrade. Um, in order to potentially then become eligible for VA health care. Um, so there's different ways to make sure that you're meeting the criteria. And I think I'm going to leave it at that for now, but please also put some questions in the chat or reach out to me. My contact information is below. Um, that's my VA mobile. You can always um, ask to speak with me and I'm happy to go over your situation as well. Next slide. Wonderful. So uh, why should I enroll? Um, so of course, as we know, it's really important for people to have health care. Um, in, the, in the United States, unfortunately, it can be really devastating if you have a medical emergency, um, think you're healthy kind of rest of the time, but then something happens. And um, and unfortunately, the, the, this particular meme that kind of says, you know, I went to the hospital without health insurance, where am I going to get $20,000? Sometimes it's much higher than that. Sometimes we're looking at more like $200,000 or more. You want to make sure you have health care. Even if you think you're a healthy student that doesn't need health care, please make sure you know if you're eligible and get help in getting enrolled. There's no enrollment charge. There's no monthly charge. There's no yearly charge. Um, you may have some co-payments based on your income, but they're reasonable as far as health care these days, right? So medications are five, eight or eleven dollars for a 30 day supply, depending on if it's a name brand or what tier name brand or generic. And then visits to off the office, like a, a primary or basic care services are $15 and specialty services are $50. So when you're looking at, for example, even like mental health care, um, you know, out in the community, you might be paying $200, $250 privately for a therapist or a psychiatrist. At the VA, the most you would be paying for would be $50. And if you lump your appointments on the same day, you would actually only get charged one co-payment. Um, and once you're enrolled in VA healthcare, you have it for life. So I really encourage student veterans in particular, when, you're el when your income is a little lower and when you're in school, enroll while you're eligible and then you have it for life. You have it when you're potentially in a situation where you might've lost your job or your health insurance and you're in between um, having that coverage. 
Um, so very important to, to know and think about. Um, there's also other information about there about other things we provide, but I'll go ahead and go to the next slide to try to keep moving things along. Wonderful. So the other question, you know, as far as why um, else should I enroll? Um, I like to say the VA these days is not your grandfather's VA or your father's VA, as a lot of times we think, or your grandmother's or your uh, mother's. Um, it's important to know, you know, there's a very much a whole health model. There's a lot of services at the VA you might not have realized that you were um, eligible for or that you would be able to do. And I always love to also do a plug for the Pause for Purple Hearts group that my colleague Dennis Moore does. That's um, the Canine Assisted Warrior Therapy. And he tends to do it. You know, this is a flyer for the one that was happening on, um, I believe it was on Tuesdays for about eight weeks, where you can actually help to train these adorable puppies that came to one of the recent events at Skyline College over Veterans Day week. Um, and they're just so fun, um, so great to see. And I think sometimes traditional therapy may not work for everyone, but sometimes it's nice to be able to kind of be around animals and be able to kind of help um, help them. And they also kind of be helped at the same time. Um, and then ultimately those dogs go to other veterans to help them as well. Okay, um, next slide. Wonderful. So um, as far as, you know, what does VA healthcare include? I tend to think of it as head to toe coverage, um, except for teeth, unless you're hundred percent service connected. However, um, there is the VA dental insurance program that once you're enrolled in VA healthcare, you're eligible for that program as well. There is a monthly charge for that program, but what tends to happen is it's basically like the VA subsidizing the care. Um, and so it's less expensive than it would be if you were just to go to a private dentist without any insurance. Um, but a number of other services are available through the VA, um, you know, optometry, audiology, nutrition, um, those are in the San Francisco VA services you can go to directly without a primary care referral, but there's also acupuncture, chiropractic care, massage therapy, all sorts of things that do sometimes require referrals, um, but are fairly easy to access, and so we always want to encourage folks to look into those. Um, next slide. Wonderful. So I think my one of my take home messages would be, if you're not sure if you're eligible, if you're not sure if you feel like you call and you don't get an answer right away, if you're not sure exactly what's happening, be persistent. It, you know, the VA is a large bureaucracy. Um, there's a lot of us that are really happy to help. We've got some great providers at the VA. We, a lot of times I, I love my job. I love being able to try to help get folks enrolled and connected or at least be really clear on why they're not eligible or what they need to do. So I do really like this particular meme here that is, um, you know, when life closes a door, just open it again. It's okay. They're supposed to do that. That's how doors work. So if you feel like a door has been closed on your face, um, please just remember you need to be persistent. You know, it's a big system, but that also allows you to have healthcare access across the country. And it takes a lot <laughs> in terms of kind of running that and being able to make sure that you just have to kind of be diligent and persistent, which is very similar to some skills you probably learned in the military as well. Um, and the other thing thing is that we are very much here to help. Next slide. So I'll very briefly kind of go over our student veteran health program. So we're actually one of the programs that started and inspired the VITAL program, which is kind of nationally social workers and psychologists on campuses throughout the country. So we started out at City College of San Francisco. We're really lucky to be able to be involved with Skyline College as well. And there's a number of programs like ours across the country, but um, I always am proud to say we were kind of one of the first um, to have actually mental health services, enrollment services, social work support on campus um, across the country. Um, next slide. And so the things that we can do, we can help determine if you're eligible for VA healthcare, we can help you enroll, we can help you get a VA ID card. There's a picture of that um, up in the corner of this particular slide. We can also help you schedule medical mental health appointments um, and kind of figure out maybe which location is best for you based on where you live and or are going to school. Um, and also to try to make it an easier process of asking for help and kind of asking questions and kind of knowing where to go. Sometimes it's even hard to know what questions to ask and so I'm very, um, I understand that and I'm always happy to do kind of an orientation, particular to the San Francisco VA healthcare system. That way folks are familiar with the resources and know how to, to navigate things. Um, next slide. 
Wonderful. And as far as just kind of the enrollment process, I'll try to kind of do this briefly. The form that you would complete is called a 1010 EZ. Um, you would usually submit this along with a copy of your DD-214. The income information that they ask for on this application is based on your income from the prior year. So because we're in 2023, it works similar to taxes. They're looking for your 2022 income. And once we get to 2024, we're going to be looking at your 2023 income. Um, you also want to... Um, make sure that you know you fill out every section completely if you can if it's not applicable just say na happy to do this with folks over zoom or over the phone or um, i will be next at skyline college on the 5th um, of december from 11 30 to 3 30 and lauren always sends out regular um, emails to let folks know when i'm going to be on campus but always happy to schedule a specific time if that's helpful for folks too or phone video my contact information is there um, so please feel free to reach out um, and you can also apply online by phone through the HEC um, Health Eligibility Center, as well as in person with member services. But I do want to also assure you that I track the applications very closely that I do. I do sometimes feel like they go into a black hole when people um, apply online and in other kind of modalities. So I'm always happy to just make sure um, things are happening smoothly, get back to folks so that they're clear on the process. Um, so if you would like a little bit more um, concierge service around your enrollment, happy to help with that. Next slide. Wonderful. So I'm going to try to get through this as our last official slide kind of quickly, but I do think it's important to kind of go over the kind of a lot of the myths that are out there about VA healthcare. So one of them is I have to have served in combat or have a service connection disability rating in order to be eligible for VA healthcare, which is not the case. Um, you know, a lot of veterans that might have separated, had an honorable discharge, two years active duty service, income is below the threshold, they would be eligible. Um, while having a service connection disability and or ha having served in combat or served in a, or having been deployed, excuse me, to a combat theater of operations might make you eligible for VA healthcare. It is important to know that that's not the, that's not the only reason. Um, so there's many um, eligibility kind of combinations that are important to keep in mind. Um, myth number two, veterans are only eligible for VA healthcare for a limited time. So sometimes people are like, well, I can only apply for 120 days or something like that, or a couple of years. You can actually apply for VA healthcare anytime. And once you're enrolled, you have it for life. So it's always good to have it as a backup health care, even if you have other health care um, and or, you know, it's important to use it as, you know, perhaps you would like to go to a provider that specializes in working with veterans. And so that's always kind of a good thing to keep in mind as well. Um, but you do need to enroll in order to be eligible for the services. And I do really recommend students and folks that who's has their whose income is fairly low from the prior year, enroll while you're eligible. Um, because if you're, you get grandfathered in, if you apply and you enroll and you're in, um, and your income goes up, you're still eligible for VA health care. However, if you wait too long and you're doing quite well and your income is above the threshold, then you would not be eligible if you didn't also qualify for other reasons. Um, so another myth, I can't reapply because I've been told I don't qualify for VA health care due to income or insufficient time um, uh, as far as active duty time. And um, particularly for that um, myth, that is not true. Um, if you are found ineligible um, and your circumstances have changed, so your income has gone down, um, you've lost your job, for example, or a spouse or partner has, you've become service connected, you move to a different area. And in some ways, like if you lived in Fresno and you moved to San Francisco, the threshold is going to increase. It's a good time to potentially try to enroll. Your family has expanded because the more people in your family, the more that threshold starts to go down, you can reapply. So it's it's probably good to ask kind of when you should reapply. Usually the next calendar year is a good time to do that, but always it's always worth applying and finding out. Um, and so the last myth is, and this we get this so much, um, if I use VA health care, I'll be taking services away from another veteran who needs the care more than I do. Um, this is really, it's quite the opposite, really. <laughs> um, so VA healthcare, first of all, it's a benefit that you've earned because of your service. But the way that VA healthcare works is if you enroll and use it, 
and basically tells Congress that the service is important and it helps to ensure that the VA's budget is expanded, right? And helps to ensure that the VA allocates more providers to care for all of the veterans who actually need the care. So actually enrolling in VA healthcare really just allows the VA to kind of help not only you, but your fellow veterans. So I definitely encourage folks to do that. The only caveat I would say is if you have an appointment, please can't and can't make it, please cancel it because no shows tend to make for a longer wait times for everybody. And so that is one kind of thing that's always important to be kind of courteous if you can to your fellow vets for that reason. Next slide has my contact information. So you're welcome to, if you want to do a screenshot of that or take a picture, um, please do. I also have the Veterans Crisis Line and text message, telephone linked care, um, and happy to answer any questions that are come up in the chat after um, my segment is now done. So thank you so much. All right, thank you, Bridget. I uh, appreciate the information, all good information about the VA healthcare system. Um, and like Bridget said, or like Lauren mentioned earlier, uh, we're gonna just start with the federal VA. Now we're moving into the state VA or state VA. Uh, so CalVet, that's what I'm part of. I'm a training coordinator with the California Transition Assistance Program. Um, and I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about how we work with veterans across the state. Um, and after I'm done, I'll go ahead and bring in my colleague, uh, Kevin Graves, he is a local interagency network coordinator. He's gonna to talk to you a little bit about how they work with veterans as well. Um, so what is CalTAP? Uh, CalTAP is a transition assistance program that's designed to inform and connect veterans of all areas to their earned state and federal benefits, as well as provide continuous assistance and support as their needs change over time. And so what we've done is we've developed different pathways that help uh, veterans and their family members navigate those benefits and services available to them. Uh, those pathways are uh, our entrepreneurship pathway, our employment pathway, our education pathway. Um, we have a general core curriculum pathway uh, that just talks about those benefits and services that don't fit into those topics that I just mentioned. And then we have a service writer pathway. Um, so if you have any fa uh, family member or somebody within your community that does want to work with veterans, um, send them to our website to check out the service writer curriculum. It just talks about military culture and what to expect when you are working with this group uh, here in California. This is uh, your veterans resource book. Um, so we are putting a link in the chat to download a PDF copy of this book. Um, you can also find a hard copy of this book at your County Veterans Service Office or even um, probably within your VRC there on campus. Um, if not, we could definitely work on getting you guys some books. Uh, but I like to say this book is like gold for veterans. So everything that we discuss when it comes to uh, Benefits, eligibility requirements, um, forms that you need to submit uh, can all be found in this book. Um, so take a, uh, take a second to look through it, see what's available to you from the state of California um, and uh, get those benefits that, are, that you've earned. So how do you use CalTAP online? Uh, so you can go to our website, calvet.ca.gov and there in the middle of the page, you'll find the CalTAP banner. Um, when you click on that banner, that will take you to our Pathways page. Um, before I go on to the Pathways, I do want to bring your attention to the archives link down at the bottom. Um, so when COVID started, uh, we actually had to stop traveling and we started putting on webinars. Uh, we recorded all those webinars and put them onto our website. Um, so I think Lauren mentioned this earlier. Uh, you can find uh, all the videos we've recorded on our YouTube page. Uh, we've talked about everything from claims and compensation, um, education benefits, mental health webinars. We've had webinars on financial uh, literacy. Um, so anything you can think of, we've probably already talked about it. So go ahead and check out our, our library, see what other resources you could gather from those um, events. Now back to the pathways page. If you click on any one of these pathways, they'll take you to a modules page. Uh, but here, if you click on the core curriculum pathway, you're taken to a modules page that looks like this. Uh, if you want more information about the VA healthcare system, you can always go to our website and check out that curriculum there, module three. Uh, claims and compensation, module four. And if you're just curious to know what benefits are available to you through California, you can always click on module five. So what are those benefits? Well, the first one is going to be your local interagency network coordinator. So I mentioned earlier, Kevin Graves is on the line with us. Um, he is um, basically uh, a 
liaison between the state federal benefits and outside resource local resources um, and the and the veteran. Um, so he's has relationships with uh, individuals in both the state and federal offices of of, of VA. Um, he also has relationships with uh, uh, organizations that are local. Um, so within the VA, uh, Bay Area region. Um, but I'm not going to step on his toes too much because he's going to come and talk to you a little bit about what he does. But this is probably one of the better uh, resources that CalVet has to offer to our veterans here in California. Um, on top of that, we do have a education benefit that's offered to our veterans dependents. Uh, so that way the veteran can actually use their own education benefits to go to school while also sending their child to any state funded uh, college. Um, make it easier to identify yourself as a veteran now, so you can actually get the word veteran printed on your driver's license. Uh, these are programs that are offered through the DMV, as well as the motor vehicle registration fee waiver. If you do like to be outdoors, we have a fishing and hunting license that's offered at a reduced cost and a state park pass that's offered at no cost. And then we do have uh, tax programs um, that you can take advantage of if you own property or if you are um, thinking of opening your own business or starting your own veteran-owned business. Um, on the uh, right-hand side of the screen, you can see we have um, different divisions that fall underneath CalVet. So if you think of CalVet as an umbrella, um, the divisions that fall underneath it would be the Home Loans Division, which is different than our federal VA Home Loans Program. Um, we have a division that offers advocacy outreach uh, and support to our women veterans and our minority veterans. Um, if you are in, if you're looking for information about homes for long-term care or um, cemeteries, there are eight different homes that offer uh, different types of cares to our veterans here in California. Um, and we have three different uh, cemeteries that are different than the federal VA cemeteries. So different uh, divisions that can help you out with different parts of uh, your transition. So this la uh, last couple slides are just some common websites we think you should be familiar with as a veteran, not just as a veteran here in California, but as a veteran in general. Um, VA.gov is going to be a hub for veterans. Uh, you heard Bridget talk a lot about VA.gov today. Um, so whether you're looking for information about the VA healthcare system or uh, records, uh, claims compensation, or um, you want to take advantage of your education benefits or, or look to see what your education benefits are, you'd want to start at va.gov. This is what it looks like when you are logged in um, and you have your profile ready to go. Another cool website to uh, utilize is uh, My Healthy Vet. So if you are part of the VA healthcare system, you can check your health, check out your healthcare records here on this website. You can talk with your primary care physician, um, create appointments with them, and even refill prescriptions. All right, so if you want to stay in touch with uh, CalTAP and, um, you know, see what other webinars or, or events we're going to be participating in in the future, you can always provide your non-DOD email address to our CalTAP inbox. That's CalTAP at calvet.ca.gov. We do check that daily. Um, so if you provide that uh, email address, we'll go ahead and put you on a mailing list and you'll be sent a um, uh a bi-weekly newsletter, I believe it's bi-weekly every, uh, every other week that just shows what uh, webinars are gonna be coming up in the future and what service providers we'll be working with during that month. Uh, you can also go to MyCalVet on our homepage and register or log in. Um, every single page you go to on our website will have a MyCalVet login or register button at the top right-hand corner. Um, that just kind of tailors the information that you're looking for more to your interests. Uh, and then you can visit our social media pages. We have a, a Instagram, a YouTube page, um, and a LinkedIn. Um, and then attend our, our, our webinars. So this is what my CalVet looks like. As I mentioned, every page is going to have uh, the login or register button at the top corner. Uh, and then this is what our newsletter looks like. So we will have uh, information about the different webinars that are going to be um, that we're going to present. Uh, over the month and the different uh, service writers that we work with. Uh, you also get a message from our deputy secretary that just kind of uh, talks about the month's focus. Um, and um, just so a thank you for, for being a part of uh, CalVet. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Kevin Graves. Uh, Kevin Graves is the 
Bay Area Link or Bay Area Local Interagency Network Coordinator. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about how they work with veterans in his area. So go ahead, uh, Kevin, when you're ready. Hey, everybody. I just uh, want to say hi. And you can see that I'm literally working out of the back of my car today. There's Blair, my service dog. Uh, I've trained her really well, but she can't do this presentation for me yet. So I'm still working on that. Uh, uh, let me get over to where the slides are. Uh, if I talk to my can. Okay. Uh, there we go. So the first slide up is uh, the map of the regions that we cover as uh, links. Um, you're going to find a lot of this information seems to be redundant. Uh, some of the things that Bridget said, some of the things that Michael said, some of the things that I say, and a lot of what Alex says is going to be seem redundant. But in fact, the reason for that is because we want to make sure that the message gets through. And we want to make sure that you get it from different directions, because sometimes it makes more sense depending on who it's coming from and how it's being presented. Um, this map shows the uh, my seven colleagues throughout the state. There are eight of us statewide. Um, we um, we we are subject matter experts primarily within our region. So my region is the green region there, which includes uh, Pacifica or or, or uh, San Bruno or Skyline College, <laughs> and um, and I cover about I cover nine Barry counties in San Joaquin County. So I'm familiar with a lot of the more uh, non-governmental agencies that uh, provide benefits for, for veterans within that area. But I wouldn't know maybe so much about what's going on, let's say, in the Inland Empire or down in San Diego. And I would refer you to one of my colleagues down there because they do have that same relationship with a lot of the for-profit and non-profit organizations. So if you have friends that live in other areas of the state that are looking for help, uh, this map can be beneficial to you. There are... I, I've, I can't see it because my eyes aren't that good, but I know there's a website there. I mean, a, a, a email address, if not a phone number, uh, and reach out. And we're here to try to help you navigate uh, some of the complications that occur. Uh, next slide. So I kind of covered this. This is kind of what our primary role is. Um, one of the things that we do a lot of, and fortunately this year was a good year for, uh, for not having uh, natural disasters, but um, we work with the local emergencies also. So we are, we're very active whenever there's a fire, flood, uh, any of those kind of things. Uh, we, we participate in the uh, local assistance centers or the, or, uh, the disaster relief centers uh, to provide benefits immediately uh, for veterans that may have lost their homes, may have lost their meds, may have lost their hearing aids, whatever. Uh, we try to, to play uh, an instant uh, role with them at that point. And then we also provide uh, advocacy within the local areas, uh, uh, helping our business leaders and our political leaders understand the benefits of having veterans living in their backyard um, and how best to utilize that asset. Next slide, please. We, uh, we help you connect the benefits by partnering with uh, our governmental agencies, first of all, and uh, for employment, we rely heavily uh, on the EDD. Uh, there's many of EDD offices, every one of them has at least one dedicated employee that does nothing but work for veterans. Uh, a lot of them have two. One that goes out and looks for employers that understands the benefit of hiring, hiring uh, veterans, and one that actually works with the veteran to to prepare uh, resumes, uh, practice uh, role playing with regards to interviews and that type of thing. It's that's all they do. That's their whole their whole funding is around veterans. So take advantage of that at the EDD. We also, um, you heard a lot about, uh, about what benefits uh, and you saw what benefits are available through CalVet, but really the people that uh, are our boots on the ground are the County Veteran Service Officers. And you're gonna hear from that office here pretty soon, but every one of the benefits that's provided by CalVet, uh, the eligibility comes from the County Veteran Service Office for almost every one of them. They're the ones that can validate your eligibility, make sure that you're properly filling out and receiving the forms you need, and getting what, you, getting what you need. Oh, my battery's getting low. Um, with regards to healthcare, you heard about that. We rely on our big brother, uh, the VA, uh, to uh, the federal VA to provide that for you. And also um, don't leave out your vet centers who um, have great mental health um, specialists that do great work with, uh, with our veterans also. Next slide, please. Oh, that's it, there you go. There, that's me. I'm here for you. Again, another resource that you can that you can lean on. Um, I, I, I said there is some redundancy there, but we're all here for you. And so I thank you for your time. And uh, that's all I have.
Have a good day. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, again, good resource from CalVet. Offer to you guys. Uh, use them whenever you need to. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Alex Ayak. Alex is part of the San Mateo uh, CVSO or County Veteran Service Office. He's going to talk to you about how they work with veterans across uh, the county. So go ahead, Alex, when you're ready. Thank you, Michael, for the handoff. Um, hello, my name is Alex. I'm with the CVSO here in San Mateo County. Um, next slide, please. Hey, Alex, I gotta say, um, it's a little hard to hear you. I'm not, um, maybe there's a mic that you could pull closer to you. Can you hear me now or? Oh, that's better. Yeah, much better. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know the headphones, but thank you again for having me. Can I get the next slide, please? So here is just um, an overview of what the CVSO does. Um, every county has a CVSO, so working with your local one can be more beneficial, but there are no red lines of where you can go for your VSO services. But the main thing we do is act as advocates for veterans and their families seeking VA healthcare or VA compensation and pensions. We are accredited to CalVet to have the ability to have power of attorney, to advocate for veterans, to look up into their VA files, look at what their medical evidence is, and basically have the supporting evidence to file a claim on behalf of the veteran to get the VA compensation, pension, and health care. Um, as Bridget mentioned earlier, my goal is if you're not taking the enrollment route with VA health care or you're not eligible for it, this is another option for you to look into your eligibility, which is the service connection. So you can go to the VA health, um, you can still go to a VA hospital and get health care for you and your dependents. It's all based on eligibility too, however. Um, and then kind of the last thing was to connect veterans with broad range of services. Um, a lot of the connections we have are here right now in this meeting. Will that be CalTAP or Bridget um, helping us with VA healthcare? And then if you need local resources too, which I'll cover later on. Next slide, please. So here are the types of assistance that we generally have. Um, as you can see, it's pretty comprehensive. The main thing we talk about, which you hear me say, um, probably time and time again, is it is failing claims for service-connected disability and also just pension claims for survivors as well. So the comprehensive benefits counseling would be, you know, you meet with our veteran service reps who work under our veteran service officer, who's Ed Kirsten, my boss. He holds the accreditation, and then we have three reps that are working cases um, every day, um, and they do the actual filing and gathering of the evidence and walk the families and the veterans through the process as best they can. And they advocate them the entire way. Um, as you can see, it's we do the federal VA level, state with CalTAP, and then local agencies too, whatever resources. We try to do whatever we can to make sure that family and the veteran is taken care of. Uh, dependency, DIC claims, um, also known as survivor ben benefits, are thereafter discussions we have with families. If the veteran is about to pass on and that compensation they currently have, let's say is four thousand a month, the family may is going to lose that four thousand dollars a month that the veteran was bringing in. So the, the we help prepare for what is next and what their the family may be eligible for after the after the veteran has passed on. Um, Leading into that also is the burial benefits. If you're the veteran would like to be buried into a national cemetery, we can help connect them to that. As well as if the we, it's very rare that a veteran gets their entire funeral paid in expense, but there is a stipend that the VA will give each family depending on the eligibility. So we always ask the families once the veteran passes on to keep those receipts and we help file for that as well with the VA to get some reimbursement claims and compensation that keep going over as well as pensions and life insurances. Uh, record requests. I know some veterans do lose their discharge paperwork or their medical records from their time in service. We can help connect you with that as well. Um, discharge upgrades as, is another service that we can help with. And then college fee waiver. If you are connected to 0%, um, your dependents can go to a California State College um, tuition free, as well as if they're eligible for room and board as well. So that is something that we help with and make and we issue a one-time code to that university and the student basically gets to go tuition free. And then lastly on here is your driver's license veterans designation. We issue those forms that you take to the DMV to get the veteran seal on your driver's license. Next slide, slide, please. 
So here's just some more additional. So the access to VHA, that would be directly with Bridget and um, your partner, Kathleen, who are very great at helping check eligibility. I just sent them a client that we had that just wanted to see if they're eligible, which they're not, but they were able to help see what else we can do. Because if you're not able to, if you don't have the medical evidence to get service connection, it's a good idea to get the healthcare system into the healthcare system to start the process to get a current medical condition that we can use as evidence for your service connected disability. Um, housing programs, Calvet, CalTAP, they have housing all over the state. Uh, we do mostly the more local programs. So Life Moves Organization, Nation's Finest. Um, there's Good Samaritan in the county, as well as a new navigation center that opened up in Redwood City, where we do have some, we do have boots on the ground where we do see if the veterans that are living there need assistance as well. Um, you've heard, I believe it, oh, they just mentioned it, but for the mental health support groups, oh, we have connections to the VA suicide prevention team, as well as the vet center who are really great at helping veterans have peers to count on and talk about their experiences and what struggles they have transitioning into the civilian life, substance abuse support, employment assistance. So on top of actually looking for employers that are vet friendly or actively looking for vets right now, it's not officially announced yet, but the county is offering veteran uh, veteran careers in the county to help with the transition into civilian life. And our office is looking for interns. I won't say for sure if it's done because I don't know, but Ed, my boss may know if we already have an intern, but our office is going to have a veteran internship to help with the transition. I know the main focus is going to be preparing for interviews and resume work while also getting the job experience for real life. Um, we, we don't necessarily do the obtaining citizenship, but we can help, again, in our network, find the services you need if you need the citizenship. And then lastly is transportation. Um, next slide, please. So these are the key issues that we're running into for veterans, or at least what our office has identified. Again, Bridget is great to rely on for accessing healthcare. And as she talked about, is eligibility being an issue? So if you don't meet the eligibility through her side, exploring the service-connected disability, non-service-connected uh, portion to get VA healthcare would be another means or avenue to get VA healthcare into the VK, VA healthcare system. And then as on top of that, like we mentioned earlier, we have substance abuse, housing, counseling. Those are some issues that we run into with veteran families. I do know we are looking to help families that are applying for service-connected disability in the meantime, looking for that um, assistance. We're, we may explore doing some Medi-Cal and CalFresh to help further bridge that gap between getting service-connected and then some help in between that time. So that is something my, my boss is exploring to help with as well. And then the main thing I would say is, again, the disability compensation compensation being the major thing we do and I have identified in our office. Next slide, please. So what is service-connected disability? So it is a chronic condition that you are suffering from today that is directly caused by your time in service. So for example, as you can read the slide too, say if you sprained your knee while you were in service and you went to the medical tent and they told you you sprained your knee and you got a diagnosis of it. And they told you to take some pills and rest for a few days and went back at it. And that knee never really healed. And even today, your knee bothers you. That is now you go to your doctor and instead of it being a knee sprain that you were told, it's cartilage issues, more problems with that knee. You can, that would be your step into seeing it getting, being service connected. So you come to our office, use that medical evidence that you've got from your current doctor that says that you have a knee issue. And we have that medical record of you going into, while you were in service that you went to um, the medical and got a diagnosis there that you had a knee issue and it was reported that you can, we can use that to prove to the VA that this is a service connected disability and to issue you a service rating. Now that is probably the really uncommon to have that happen. A lot of veterans don't have that medical evidence or it's lost. 
but don't let it discourage you because there are other avenues to get into service connection. If you do have a current medical condition and a doctor is able to tell you that what you did in service most likely aggravated this condition or caused this condition, we can use that information to advocate for you to get that service connection disability. Going on, as you can see too, is a secondary related to service related injuries. So going back to, if you had that knee problem, and because of that knee problem, you, you it's not weight bearing and you had to hobble when you sprain and now your hip is an issue or your back hurts. That is a secondary related condition to what was primarily your knee. But now because of you favoring it, your whole body is affected. So that would be kind of around about what is service connected. And our office is basically taking that medical evidence and applying it to VA law to show that this here is a a condition that the VA is responsible uh, should be responsible for covering, and they will issue the compensation. Next slide, please. So I kind of talked about this already, but how the service connection works. Um, veteran is rated on severity of disability. So that would be after you give your medical evidence, you may go to a compensation and pension exam where you are seen by a VA doctor who examines what you are claiming, and they will determine that severity and then tell a VA representative who will give you a percentage of basically 0% to 100% for the severity of your condition. Um, and that's your service connection. And based on your 0% to 100%, um, you're given either, you're given an inc a monthly income stipend, as well as coverage, as well as the benefits that were mentioned from CalTAP to um, up to state parks, national parks, uh, hunting, fishing license taken care of. Those are all connected from being service connected with us, well, through the VA. And the requirements are uh, having served in the U.S. military um, and then your discharge rating. That's a major one that we look at. So I'm not sure if it's for every service, but in general, the three the three discharges that we can work with is, of course, honorable, other than honorable in general, those are the ones that you you will meet that eligibility. If it's lower, then we need to do a dis discharge upgrade um, in order for us to look into different service-connected disability services. Next slide, please. And then if you don't meet the requirements of the eligibility for the service connection, so you've exhausted applying for VA healthcare yourself, um, you need monthly pension, but you're not certain you have no service connection disability, or you just don't meet those requirements. There is wartime pension, which is a special circumstance of monthly income as well as VA healthcare that you may qualify for for the fam for the veteran and their dependents. So here are the requirements though that you had to serve in a wartime era. Um, I think Bridget said it earlier too. Um, before 1980, it's 90 days of active duty. After is two years, but uh, you didn't have to deploy. It just you if you served during Vietnam, but you were stateside, you still meet that um, eligibility. And then the income, that's the major part because the VA is going to see if there's it's a needs basis program. So as you can see here, it's under the, I think it's the federal poverty level. I may not be certain, but on the next slide, it will have the actual number that you'll need to meet as in the threshold for being low income and meeting the eligibility for this program and asset limits. So this is $149,489. So your house that you live in is not considered an asset, asset, but if you had a vacation rental or what we always kind of kid about, if you have like a, a card, baseball card collection worth millions of dollars, that will keep you from being eligible for this program. Again, your character of service, and then it's age and disabled, and those would be basically the requirements getting into certain programs. Um, very common for if the veteran passed on and the wife is still alive but needs a memory care facility. Um, this is basically how the family can go about looking to see if she's eligible for some assistance through the VA. Next slide, please. Um, and then, as I said, these are the thresholds for meeting that wartime pension. Um, if you're making under $16,037, if it's with a dependent, it's twenty one thousand dollars. So if they're over this amount, you you do not qualify for that wartime pension. Um, if they're housebound, however, it goes up. So you can see these different amounts. Uh, 
just to check your eligibility. And our office helps assist with that and walks you through the process. So we actually fill out the forms. We just ask you to gather your evidence, looking at your incomes, um, social security, and making sure that you're under this threshold so we can help get you that assistance. And I, it doesn't list the whole thing. I'm pretty sure one of the resource books, the resource book definitely has it. I don't know if the links in the chat actually have it as well, but here are the monthly amounts that you can expect at your service connected rating. As you can see, 10% is 165 and a full hundred percent is almost $3,800. That amount changes with dependents and other special circumstances too. Next slide, please. And what we really want you to know, if you have questions or just exploring, we do please visit our website. Um, we update it nearly every day with as much important information that we can. Um, next slide, please. And here's our information. Uh, you can come make an appointment. Uh, give us a call. You'll you'll probably talk to me or Sam. And Sam is a walking encyclopedia. She can really help get you through any if you have any questions. And then at the end of the day, getting an appointment just to talk to a veteran service rep will probably be most beneficial for you and they'll tell you what you're eligible for as well. And that's all I have for today. Yeah, all right, thanks Alex. Uh, great presentation. Uh, your slides are really beautiful too. Um, we're, we're gonna go ahead and go into the uh, questions and answers part. So um, I know my contact information wasn't up on my section earlier, so I apologize, but it is there now. Um, so my email address is there. If you guys have any questions about CalTAP, uh, California Benefits, or even um, questions about you know what we went over today in general, feel free to reach out to anyone um, of us. You can also reach out to me and I could also direct you to anybody um, that I need to if I can't answer your questions. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna bring Derek in real quick. Derek is my colleague. Uh, he's He's been working the back end. Um, I didn't see, it doesn't look like I saw any, or I didn't see any questions come through, but Derek, maybe um, something came through that, that I missed. Um, if not, then we could continue moving forward. Uh, yeah, Michael, I, I haven't received any uh, questions uh, today, um, but just as long as we have our contact information up, um, they can always reach out to CalTAP or any one of the presenters today if uh, they want to follow up with any questions. Definitely. Yeah, if there's any, totally. Yep. Uh, if you have any, if anything else comes up, um, you know, as the day moves forward, feel free to reach out to either one of us uh, and we'd be happy to help. Um, so go ahead and um, end it there then. It uh, looks like we are right on time. Um, I want to thank you guys for being here today. Thank you to our uh, guests, to Skyline College for having us, um, to the San Mateo County Veteran Service Office for um, jumping on the webinar and helping us out with this one. Um, thank you to the uh, students, uh, student veterans out there and the veterans and service members who attended. Um, we hope to see you guys at the next one. Thank you.